Well, 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 good evening, Woodhounds. Welcome to the Friday Night Live live stream. Back 40 live stream. That's right. And tonight, we are heating things up. It is going to be uh, <laughs> it's gonna be a good time. So I uh, hope everybody had a good week and is ready to put the week behind them and get going with the weekend. So one thing I did want to mention quick, um, if you're new here, welcome. Don't be afraid to uh, jump into the chat, introduce yourself, um, and also uh, head on over to back40firewood.com and add yourself to the Woodhound map of the world because... Last week, we picked up, believe it or not, three woodhounds from the state of Montana. So we are down to only two states remaining to uh, have a little paw print put on them. So, uh, so yeah. So, all right. Let's get this uh, started off like we always do. Raise up our cups and toast to the week behind us. So glad you're all here to join us tonight. Cheers, everyone. All right. So, as many of you know, we have a special guest tonight joining us. And uh, we'll get ready to bring him in here in a second. He should be all ready to go. Um, so, yeah. Without further ado, let me get my, let me get my sound bar ready here. <laughs> because this, this guy, his channel is one of the, uh, the hottest channels out there right now, believe it or not. And it fits his name, Ohio Woodburner. So everyone, welcome to the Back 40 live stream, Joe from Ohio Woodburner. <laughs> How's it going, Joe? Yeah, yes, it is going well. All right. <laughs> it is going well. I see you have a nice fire cooking behind you there, and... Is yeah. that um some new some new a new t-shirt you're wearing? This is <laughs> <laughs> it is one of my new ones, yes. But uh, uh right now I'm cooking. It's hot in here. <laughs> <laughs> and you know me and uh me and heat don't get along. <laughs> well, thanks for uh thanks for jumping on the live stream tonight. Um everybody, we will be taking a few questions here and there. Um if if you have a question, throw it in the chat. I'll try to get to it. Um but yeah, we're just gonna, you know, kick back and uh, have a little woodhound. Uh oh, here it comes. I think the little boss man is making wants to make his appearance early. <laughs> Hang on one second. <laughs> oh, maybe not. All right. <laughs> oh, there he is. Come on in here quick. <laughs> we gotta have a. Uh, the little boss man wants to say hi. <laughs> and he likes to sneak up. <laughs> there he is. How you doing, Gary Gross? How you doing, Todd Lacey? How you doing, JR, a cat? He lives down by me. So um, so how's the how's the tractor going? It is uh, it is sitting warmly in the garage right now. <laughs> It is, uh, it's cold outside and it snowed all day. I had some deliveries to do and, uh, I, I have used it, I think, uh, two times pretty significantly, but, uh, I, you know, it's just, it's just the way the weather has been. Have, have you noticed, um, the, any issues with your cold start in the seat sensor? No, uh, uh. I don't like the seat sensor, you know, it, um, so when you stand up, you know, cause the first thing I've learned right away, uh, and I've heard a lot of people say that about the sub, the, the compact tractors, you know, with forks, you can't see, you know, I can't, I can't see the forks and, and it's, it's bad enough when I don't know what I'm doing on top <laughs> of everything else. And, but so you can't see, you know, so you want to stand up and peek over top of the hood. Um, but you know, then the engine shuts off. So, but it doesn't shut off right away. Like I have a lawnmower that's like that, Yeah. but it, it gives you about four seconds, I think. So you can sneak a quick peek, but then you got to <laughs> plop down real fast. Yeah. I've, <laughs> I've, I've been there myself many times. It's like you just get off the seat a little bit and then the engine starts to die and you quick jump down. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I would imagine it's probably an easy thing to disable, but you know, like right now I'm I'm leaving all the safety stuff there. Well, um, if I think you, it's just in everyone's nature, you want to disable all the safety equipment. If you disable it though, you val you void your warranty. Ooh, well, I don't want that to happen yeah. because I oh. have a five year warranty with it. <laughs> all right, so we gotta we gotta jump over because the tradition here on the Back for Your live stream is if we get a super chat, uh, we all raise up our cups and make a toast to that person. And it doesn't matter what's in your cup. You just have to raise it up. So, um, Joe, because you're here tonight, right there, we got <laughs> I got to crack open my Dr. Pepper and let's jump over here. <laughs> oh god all right let's uh bring up oh we'll bring up larry senior firewood hound larry hoddle thank you very much my friend cheers <clears throat> <laughs> oh so yeah so i do have a little uh dr pepper here you know because you know that's i, I know that's that's your go-to drink right that's what Hey. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, oh my goodness. We got to jump. Well, we'll just we'll just raise it up right here. Um let me cuz I'm I'm behind on the chats here. I'm I'm losing control of this production right now. <laughs> so we've got the Irish Wolfhound <clears throat> um from Ireland and uh he would like to make a toast as well. So everybody Cheers to the Irish Wolfhound. Five euros. Yes. So the one thing, you know, I was thinking about when I was thinking about all the things I wanted to ask you, you know, I've, my mind is always turning whenever I'm watching your videos. And, and uh, but the thing is, is that, you know, I think a lot of people in on this live stream and I probably already watch your videos. So, you know. The one thing I was curious about is if you ever, when you go out in the wood yard and you're not making a video and you're just out there to, you know, get some work done, uh, what would we be hearing on your playlist coming out of your, uh, on your, in your headphones? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I know Elvis. I know Elvis. No. Uh, uh, the, the Swedish supergroup ABBA. Ah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, so um, I got Spotify, oh, okay. <laughs> and uh, so there is Fleetwood Mac, Queen, and uh, my go-to and I my favorite band of all time is Pink Floyd. Really? Yeah, great band. Wow. And, and I'm not even the depressive type of person. Uh, my favorite song by Pink Floyd is a song... It's not a popular one. It's called What's the Deal? And it's about, it's about work. And, and um, you know, the, 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 the struggle and, and uh, the positive outcome, you know, of a, of a hardworking life. Yeah. Great song. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah, that's, that's the one downside with me is I use my phone – to make videos and then I don't have the, you know, I'm never listening to music off of it, <laughs> but I used to all the time. <laughs> uh -huh. so, yeah. I have those work tunes, those work tune headphones and I, I use them a lot more in the wintertime uh, because, yeah. you know, in the summertime they, they sweat your ears, but uh, I, I use them all the time, you know, with all my machines and all. <laughs> oh, all right. Ladies and gentlemen, we got to raise up our cups because uh, Jared Hildebrandt is, uh, just made him a little super chat. Son, your ego is running checks your body can't cash. <laughs> That's a quote from Top Gun. So cheers to Jared <laughs> Hildebrandt. Oh, and oh my goodness. We got it. <laughs> and then we have to, uh, we, I got to grab this one because they're flying by fast. The Bradleys on Catbird Hill. Greetings to all fellow woodhounds from the Bradleys on Catbird Hill. Got some big wood to cut this weekend. Uh-oh. Well, that's good because, uh, well, hopefully your we the weather is nice because around here it's going to be cold. Cold for cutting wood. 
But thank you very yeah. much, everyone, for those uh, those uh, super chats. Greatly appreciate that. And again, welcome, everybody. I see there's a few more people jumping on. So we're here live with uh, Joe from Ohio Woodburner. And um, the little boss man was just here. So I don't know. Where... <laughs> but um, so, yeah, everyone, if you do, like I said, if you do have any questions, I'll try to get to them here a little bit later. Throw them in the chat. And, um, yeah, we'll go from there. Um, uh oh, <laughs> I'm getting, I'm getting pranked behind me here from the little boss man. He's popping around here, but, <clears throat> uh oh, hey, wait, come here. <laughs> Don't go. He's going to probably unplug my whole system. Come here. <laughs> Get out from down there. <laughs> this is live, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> this is one of the things that happens when you're live <laughs> so i know um i know this weekend you're probably going to be cheering for the uh the green bay packers um obviously uh you know when they play on sunday but what uh what are some of you are, are you like did you play any sports as a kid or are you into any sports i mean you know besides yeah you know, i I, I was a baseball yeah I was a baseball player my whole life really? and I played yeah I played until I was 31 years old I was a pitcher I played in college well I was on the team in college <laughs> 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 and um, I, I always thought yeah I, I was uh, I was in an amateur league I always thought I was getting the call up to the big leagues because my coach kept telling me he says Joe, if you keep pitching the way you are, you won't be in this league much longer. So, wow. he, uh, uh, <laughs> that is really <laughs> interesting. That, that is, I would, I would never have guessed that. That is, yeah, that's awesome. I think um, coming back to th thinking back upon things now, I would have been a lock for the major leagues, but there was only one thing that was keeping me out, uh, and that was a lack of uh, it was talent. <laughs> <laughs> It turns out the uh, the major leagues had an abundance of left-handed pitchers that couldn't throw strikes. So, I, uh, <laughs> oh my, <laughs> yeah. Well, that that's pretty cool. That is very cool. Um, we got a quick uh, Sam Thornton here. He sent a little super sticker and Big Bear. So to Sam Big and Bear. Big Bear, thank you very much, my I friends. Cheers. I see both of them on my channel. They are uh, uh, real good people. They always leave good comments. Yeah, that's – I think that's the one thing that I was most surprised with. Like, because, um, you know, before I started my channel, I, like, you know, watched YouTube and I'd go through, you know, people's comments, see their their uh, messages. And, and the one thing that surprised me was, like, the community of people – you know, surrounding firewood is just, mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know. It's, <laughs> it's, it's kind of, it's, it's kind of unique yeah. in the fact that there's not a lot of uh, negativity. <laughs> yeah. Well, I will knock wood, but uh, you know, that was one of the uh, things that, you know, you think about when you're going to post your first video, you know, uh, do you really want to do this? <laughs> Cause you don't know <laughs> what you're getting into. And I, uh, that was one of them, you know, I was dealing with, cause you know, the, there is a, you know, there's a, a crusty culture, you know, with the chainsaw crowd and stuff, you know, they'll let you know that what's on their mind. And I, I don't know it's just the, for the most part in my channel, I don't get these nasty comments, you know, it's been pretty polite and professional. Yeah. Um, I think, it, there has only been one uh, person that I have, you know, banned <laughs> hit, the, <laughs> hit, the, hit the terminate button too. And that was just cause they were just, they were just bizarre. But, um, <laughs> you know, I, I don't tolerate any cussing on the channel. Uh, so if I see any cuss words, I, I delete them. Yep. And that's not to say that I don't have a potty mouth. It's just, um, <laughs> Yeah, you know, I, I have been told by some people that I'm, you know, I'm one of the few channels on YouTube that they allow their kids to watch because they know it's safe and, you know, there's no inappropriate comments and stuff going on. Yep. So uh, I, I just, uh, that's just one of the standards I'm going to maintain, at least on YouTube. Yeah, that's, that's the same way I was, as you know, 
at first I kind of had to find myself holding back from letting the, you know, curse word out <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, every now and then, you, you know, something happens, you're just, you know, but, but yeah, I was the same way. The only thing that I will say is that, you know, with all the feedback, you know, you have to like take it and not, you know, put it in a context of being positive. You know, you can't always think of it as somebody being negative, but I've actually learned quite a few things, you know, from people. So, oh, yeah. hang on. The Irish Wolfhound, this, this crazy man from I Ireland, he's got another super <laughs> chat out there. So thank you very much, Ronan. Oh, I'm glad you were here tonight to see the shirt. <laughs> yes. So cheers to Ronan, the Irish Wolfhound. <laughs> But yeah, the one the one thing lately I've been getting um, like mentioned a lot is, and I never realized this when I hold my chainsaw, I don't have my thumb under the handle; I have it on the top. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, I've kind of been trying to pay attention to that, you know, just. Uh -huh. So it's it's a good thing. Well, that is. <laughs> yeah, it started off as a joke, but now I don't know. You know, I was always saying I'm never you'll never see me run a chainsaw on my channel, you know, because <laughs> you, I could be I could be wrapped up in bubble wrap, you know, with duct tape <laughs> and and uh, a hockey mask, you know, and, and I would still, you know, they still pick you apart for yeah. oh, you didn't, you know, watch your thumb and this and that, you're fucking <laughs> So, <laughs> I, I I think the day will come when I will run one of my saws, but uh, <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, I got I got other stuff I can do right now. I was gonna say I'm, yeah. I was surprised when you mentioned that you were gonna have the logger come back to get those logs off the pile, and you weren't gonna try using your forks to just pop a few. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, I, you know, there was a number of comments about that. And I have concluded that the, <laughs> the menacing nature of that pile doesn't really show up on, on my, uh, on oh, the TV screen it. as it does in person. It is, it is scary. It is, it is just, it, I need like one of those skull and crossbones signs, you know, <laughs> at the top of it. So well, I, um, <laughs> I, I'm it, it's it's really it's way up there and there is just there's like this one log it's kind of like the the keyway you know if you yeah. touch it the wrong way everything's going to come crashing down well and and the other thing is is you don't always know which log might trigger you know another log it's yeah like, and and they're all covered in snow right now too and that's another element of it you know yep yeah <clears throat> um I would think in a perfect world, I could climb up the pile, you know, and put a strap around the one key log and bring it down and tie it onto the truck or the tractor and pull it down. Um, but that, even right now, that's just. You, you better have a long be like, strap. <laughs> yeah, that'd be, <laughs> that'd be two days later. My wife would be, has anyone seen Joe? Uh, where is he at? <laughs> yeah just make sure you've got a long strap and you get it far enough yeah. away <laughs> yeah it, it would need a really long rope because you know it'd pull it down and it'd be like right as a lost ark you know the big ball <laughs> coming and rolling towards you and you're running <laughs> and my truck's flat on the that, driveway <laughs> that's that's a good visual right there <laughs> yeah so what's uh what's I know that I think I've heard you say this before. Um, I think you were in. I think you were into wrestling at one point as well. You watched a little wrestling, so <laughs> professional wrestling that is. <laughs> yeah, I was. Yeah, I was a big professional wrestling fan. Without who a doubt. was your favorite yeah. wrestler? <laughs> <laughs> I I liked all the bad guys. I was a the Iron Sheik was my favorite wrestler. I thought he was awesome. I he would just mysteriously load his boot and it would become like a deadly weapon, you know. The boots. And uh yeah, the, the I like I like the Iron Sheik, uh Nikolai Volkov, Mr. Fuji, uh Paul Orndorff, uh, not when he was the Brandon Bull when he was Mr. Wonderful, Roddy <laughs> Piper. Uh but you know what? I didn't like Hulk Hogan when he was in that uh that black beard era. Uh, Hollywood Hogan? Yeah, I wouldn't. That wasn't <laughs> Uh, he didn't fool me on. <laughs> <laughs> See, I would have thought that uh, the honky tonk man 
would have been on your <laughs> would have been on your list. <laughs> yeah, the honky tonk man. Yeah. <laughs> so we, we got one question. I'm going to grab here from uh, from Matt Roper. Okay. Um, if you've had any injuries, like what are your worst injuries you've had with firewood, or maybe oh, just I in broke, general? I yeah, I broke my ankle. Um, oh. this was when I had first started firewooding, I had made friends with some of these. I live out here in the farmlands and these farmers hate trees. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they bulldoze down these trees and they get an old tractor tire and they'll uh, lay it and they'll fill the tractor tire up with diesel fuel and they'll bulldoze all these trees on top of it and light it and they just torch them. <laughs> and, um, I, I was talking to the one and I says, um, you know, the grounds firm, could I go out there and cut up some wood? And he says, buddy, cause you can have anything you want until you see the big black cloud of smoke. He said, <laughs> so, uh, my dad and I went out there and, uh, there was an embankment and we were pulling them off with the truck and a cable and the one log, it hooked a stump or something. And it just like, ball batted me like something you see on Gilligan's Island or something, you know, I <laughs> flew up in the air, but it, um, it, it tore up my ankle. That was an awful, awful experience. Yeah. <laughs> but other than that, you know, multiple smashed fingers, um, bust. I think the, the typical injury that I get now is, um, uh, busted shins because I yep. work a lot in shorts in the summertime and it's just the way that I, cause all my wood is in stacks. And when I, pick them up you know I'll, i i can pick up they're all like stacked in my hands yep. and there's always that one that's in between your hands that falls out and it hits the ground and bounces up and and bangs you in the shin <laughs> my shins and, look like the face of the moon <laughs> <laughs> and and that's like the the thing that's so painful you know it's like just crazy <laughs> um i used to always as a kid i'd run into a draw bar going between the tractor and the hay wagon and hit your chin. <laughs> oh my goodness. It's just, just painful. <laughs> oh, Armin's high life. He has got a super chat here. Great to see you guys together. Cheers. So Armin, thank you very much. Everybody here's cheers to Armin's high life. Armin's awesome. Yeah. Great channel. The he, uh, he just had that big processor he rented and just Gee made, whiz, did made, you a see mountain, that? made a mountain of ah, wood. <laughs> that's a whole year's worth of wood he's made in the weekend. What the yeah, heck? It was crazy how much <laughs> how much stacking he's got to do. <laughs> oh my God. That's when if you're friends with him, you take your phone off the hook. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So... <clears throat> Um, is that, is, do you ever like leave any of your wood in loose piles for extended period of time? Or do you try to get your stuff stacked no. right away? No, it's stacked right away. That's just the rule that I have. We don't even call it firewood until it is stacked. You know, it's just, that's how important stacking is. Yeah. I, um, we, uh, you know, I have a lot of room, but I don't have a lot of room that I can use cause I got to stay <laughs> close to the, to the pavement. <laughs> <laughs> and we're trying to fix this problem here, but it would help if the weather <laughs> would cooperate. <laughs> but everything, that's just our thing. It's got to be stacked. Everything yep. is stacked. It's all in single file rows. You know, I got a little, I, I cheated a little bit this summer and I got my rows too close together and I picked up some mold. That was my first time ever dealing with mold. And that was just awful. I just felt like a dummy. Yeah. And you think, you know, it's like three full cords that were just wasted, you know? I'm sure someone else would have tried to sell them, but there's no way you can sell moldy yeah. wood. Even when it dries up, it looks terrible. You know? Yep. I, I yeah, ran so into that. Learned. I had stacked some uh, wood, in, and I didn't realize it at the time, um, in the shade. Um, and, you know, it just it didn't, never dried out, and the ends all got the little moldy dots on it. And Yeah, it's yeah, it's tough. I, uh, so I have, you know, this is – year 16 for firewood for me and i'm not an expert but i have stacked just about every possible way that you can and i just don't think that there's any substitute for just stacking and single file rows if you leave a foot between them or enough to get a lawnmower through it that's really all you need yep 
Well, we've got a we've got a wood, sweat, and tears saying it's nice to see a coyote interviewing a bobcat. <laughs> <laughs> appreciate you both I uh, appreciate you both do for the wood processing community so thank you very much wood sweat and cheers tears cheers <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know I noticed someone had uh, someone sent me an email and asked if I had ever done one of those Holtz housings yep <laughs> and uh, the, the answer is no <laughs> it looks too much work it looks like it's too much work for me <laughs> yeah, I was going to try one. I, um, I know that there are studies out there, you know, scientific studies where they've tested, you know, different methods of stacking. I would just tell you, and I think a lot of people out there would admit it too, that I don't think if there is a benefit to one over the other, I don't think it's a you know something that we would appreciate. You know, yeah, it's probably measurable on a scientific level, but on a practical level. Right. I don't see it. I think you just got to get it stacked off the ground and get that wind and sun going through it. The only, uh, the only thing that I do that I've learned is with oak, your wood that's going to be stacked for like more than a year. I always have it facing north and south um, because if you stack it east and west, that north side is never going to get sun. And that's yep. where you're going to get your mushrooms that's, and your, your was, moss growing on it. I was just going to ask you if you uh, pay attention to the direction of the stack. I do. Yeah, yep. I do. Now, sometimes I just can't just because my, my way my yard's set up. But I really do think the one thing that I have learned that does bring value to that labor of stacking wood is it's facing north and, north and south. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's – I. My in my wood yard, my property line is longest running east to west, so I have one big long row, and it, that's the thing: is the north side always doesn't get the sun, <laughs> right? So it's uh, yeah, it's, it's tough. Well, the north side of my house has got moss, you know, it's got mold or that green algae growing on the <laughs> on the uh, on the siding because the sun never shines over there. Yeah. So uh, Firewood at the Furnace, he says, great to see you both together at the same time. Two great guys. Cheers to you both. Also to all the Woodhounds. Cheers, Firewood at the Furnace. Thank you very much. But quick quick jumping back to the, uh, the coyote and bobcat thing. I didn't realize yeah. this, but I think your coyote, or bobcat tractor is almost identical to the coyote one. <clears throat> yeah, the way I understand it, and I'm not an expert here, <laughs> they're both made by Daedong, which is a South Korean manufacturer. Yep. Uh, you know, they got the same engines. The now I don't know for sure, but you know, I'm sure my friend Marty could tell us. The Bobcat has a different loader on it that uh, than the Coyote does. Yeah. Um, and I don't know about like the controller for the loader if it's different or not, but. Um, that was the first thing I noticed when I got onto the Bobcat was it was just in a real nice pos position and there were some tractors. I mean, they were weird, you know, it was like up here yeah. you know, and all these hoses are in the way and it's just, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, you know, the purchasing this tractor was, uh, I'll just call it an interesting experience. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I've concluded that there must be a lot of very wealthy salesmen out there that don't need any extra sales <laughs> because <laughs> what the heck? I mean, that's their, you know, what else as that's what they do is they sell tractors and I'm in there to buy a tractor and I'm, I felt like I was shopping at Sears. There was no, there was no one around. <laughs> I was the only one in there. <laughs> <clears throat> well, uh, Jay Glendhill, he, uh, he said it's the bottom of the hour, so he wanted to give us a cheer. So cheers, Jay. Has it already <laughs> been a half hour? This time is flying, man. <laughs> yeah, so have you uh, have you gotten down the whole um, – your controls a little bit better? I know you mentioned um... – No. Uh -uh. <laughs> <laughs> I looked semi-competent in my last video because of the glory of editing. <laughs> 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 oh, we got Jer Jared Hildebrand says, uh, <clears throat> what's the biggest round you've put through your kinetic splitter? Yeah, big. 
Uh, I couldn't tell you the size. I had some big ones up there that people had to help me lift, uh, but it'll go through it. It really will. You just got to hit it a few times, but I have never, I have never had a piece of wood on that machine that it hasn't split. You know, I'm serious. Yeah. Now it's not, there is, I mean, it's well built, but you know, when you throw a gigantic log up there, you know, it does. It, yeah. You know, it's not designed, I think, to hold anything big like that. But man, where it makes its money for you is about a, you know, these 10 inch logs. I mean, you can get that yep. split into four to six pieces in no time. Right. And the price that it, you know, that's a $3,000 machine, which, you know, when everyone, when you think of a log splitter, you think of these ones, you know, at Home Depot, you know, for $1,500 or $1,000. And that's a lot of money. <clears throat> but I'm serious. If you <clears throat> are dealing with, with volume, like over, you know, 10 quart a year, oh, yeah. you, you, I'm serious. <clears throat> I don't know if this comes through on my channel, but you cannot believe <laughs> how, how productive the super splitter is serious. It is the greatest bang for the buck out there. And I'm not, you know, there's a lot of great splitters out there. Yeah. I think they're all great, you know, and <clears throat> this certainly has its limitations to it, but gee whiz <laughs> for, you know, it's, it's, it's power to the, it's power for the people. It is, it is affordable and you cannot believe how productive it is. Yeah. You cannot believe. And you know, the style of firewood that I sell is, you know, the smaller the split, the more money it's worth. Right. You know? Yeah. And, and, you know, I mean, when you have one of those old hydraulic splitters with a 14 second cycle time and I'll watch videos on YouTube and I'll watch them on fast forward and they are still slower <laughs> than the super splitter. <laughs> I'm serious. So yeah. I, I know you've covered <clears throat> this in your videos, but we do have a couple people asking, um, how, um, or what, what made you start your firewood business? <clears throat> okay. So I see Stan asked that. Now I saw Zach had asked that yep, one earlier. Zach, too. Asked so that, yeah. Zach, Zach, I made a mental note and I was going to get to it. Yep. Zach's a good guy. Um, so I, <laughs> I, I'm going to make some assumptions here. I, I think, you know, we're all different, but we're also all the same. And if anyone has ever made a single stick of firewood, you, everyone thinks about selling it, you know, mm -hmm. And I had always thought about selling firewood because I make about 10 to 12 cords a year to heat my house. My outdoor wood furnace is over here. So I would, um, uh, I would think about what people are selling firewood for. And everyone around here, they sell it for about 150 a cord. And when I was thinking about, <clears throat> you know, it, it made no sense to sell it because it was worth more to me as wood than it was as cash because if I sold the wood for cash to buy propane, you know, I'm going to have more heat with the firewood. That's just what people were selling, um, yep. selling the, uh, um, uh, you know, the firewood for is they're selling it too cheap. We got a super chat here and I'll continue. Richard well, Healy, 14. Way yeah, to he's, go, he's, Richard. He's got another question. So we'll wrap this one up. And we'll jump back to his question. Okay. Yeah. So I, um, <clears throat> I work for this grocery store and that's where I learned value added, you know, where, you know, you go to a grocery store, you know, they sell all the produce, you know, cantaloupes, tomatoes, cabbage, and you can buy it at that commodity where it just came off the vine and it came in a big box and it's for sale or, but these grocery stores add value to it. You know, they cut them in little pieces and you buy a half of, they charge you for a half a cantaloupe more than what the entire cantaloupe costs, you know? <laughs> and it's because that's where I started realizing you can do this with firewood, you know, because people don't want to buy a quart of firewood. They just want enough, you know, for a weekend. Yep. And um, so the core principle is, you know, like a quarter cord of firewood is not worth a quarter cord of firewood. It's worth much more. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So yeah. that's how I got started. It, it just, it, it was just an idea. It was something I was wanting to do for fun, but you know, and then some things happened. My job got sent to the Philippines. My dad was in declining health and I talked it over with my wife and she very graciously, you know, said, let's do this. And I took care of dad and I did some firewood in. And the next thing I know, um, my, my business is, uh, exploded 
And then um, it was just too big to walk away from. Yeah. Well, so then that leads us to Richard Healy's question. Um, where do you see yourself in five years? <laughs> oh, boy. So um, I am po I'm hesitating here because the, the baseball player in me, you know, you don't want to talk about uh, good things because you'll jinx yourself. <laughs> I... <laughs> Uh, you know, you, in firewood, you know, that's, I am, I think I'm at a very precarious spot in my business's growth because I'm small enough to where I can still do everything myself, but I am not big enough to where if something, if I were to break my ankle, you know, everything's, <laughs> everything's just going to come yeah. to a screeching halt. So uh, I, um, and I had a recent discussion about someone wanting to hire me you know, for a, a real, a real job. And I, I don't want to do it. I want to keep selling firewood. I'm having a blast. The reason I was hesitating was I think that I have to start becoming uh, serious uh, and honest with myself. I really do think that I am not, no, I am not just any longer a firewood company, uh, but I'm also a YouTube channel, you know, and uh, this whole YouTube thing was uh, just started by accident <laughs> and I had no idea what, if I had, there was a time too, when I was wishing I, oh, maybe we shouldn't even have done this. You know, I had people were showing up to my house, you know, and I was like, what the heck these people, I, I have never even had my ad, they stalked me somehow and they, I mean, they were really nice, but it's still, you know, you know, it's a little unnerving. Yeah, uh, but I got to realize I am not just firewood, but I'm also a YouTube channel, you know, because there's opportunities out there, too. I don't think I will ever not be a firewood company, but I also see, you know, YouTube being a big deal, you know, yeah. um, because and this is I'm serious. <laughs> My kids laugh at me. I didn't know <laughs> you can make money in YouTube. You know? <laughs> what? I didn't know this. Uh, now I'm, and I, you know, 10,000 subscribers, you know, which me and you are, are closing in on. So, you know, you hear people out there that really strike it rich in, in YouTube and that, that's not, that's not me and back 40. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's not us. Uh, and, but it's not to say that, you know, it's not, it's not cool. You know, yeah. it's not, it's not fun. Um, uh, so I, I, see that there's opportunity now with YouTube and Firewood working working together. With those two, I'm serious. I'd like to do this. I'd like to do this as forever. I'm yeah. serious. You know? When I had a real job, I hated, hated <laughs> go, going into work every day, spending 10 hours with a bunch of people that right. You know. Well, the one thing I was wondering, um, I know you've talked about in your videos, you know, when you started selling firewood, you got your first restaurant, you know, and that yeah. was kind of like your, your moment of, oh boy. My very first customer. Yep. yep. Yeah, like, it was. Oh boy, here we go. It was my very first customer mm -hmm. when uh, they wanted their first load and it was a test to make sure that I met their standards and I, and I passed. It was the second load that I took them. I remember I was unloading it. You know, my dad was there too, and he wasn't, you know, he wasn't strong. So I had a chair. He would come and sit in a chair. And I remember thinking, I could, this could be a living, you know, <laughs> this would be cool. If, and this was like my one, I had one customer, you know, and I was thinking, God, this would be cool if you could keep, just do this every day. Yeah. You know? And that was in September of, I'm not good here with years 17, 2017. And, and now here I am, you know, I've had, I'm going on my sixth restaurant delivery Sunday this week. Yeah. So, 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 so Be that careful was, what you wish for. that was, that was the moment in the firewood realm of things when you, you know, when you were like, Oh crap, here we go. What was the mm. moment with YouTube when you were like, Oh boy, we got, you know, here we go. This is like something I'm enjoying doing. I'm having fun with it. I could see, you know, continuing on. Because, you know, yeah. there's always that point where you're like, all right, I'm going to try it. But then you all of a sudden start liking it and you want to continue it. 
Um, I think it was at, it was probably like 1000 subscribers. Um, so like, you know, when we five, first, five weeks ago, when we, <laughs> 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 you know, we posted our first video in early March. So we're not even a year old yet. We're not even a year old yet. <laughs> when we posted our first video, you know, I think there was, um, you know, a couple comments and like four people saw it. And then we, uh, you know, my, my daughter said, you know, she said, I, I think that if you can get to a hundred subscribers, that'll be great. And we did a video where we were celebrating our 100 subscribers and it was a big deal, you know, uh, cause we sat at like 50 subscribers for months and we just kept doing videos, but it was like, we were invisible. No one was seeing us. And uh, I don't know what happened because there's like, you know, these, there's these, I think there's these uh, are gerbils and the, the cages that spin wheels for YouTube. <laughs> and somehow mine got, something happened, but mine got into the algorithm somehow. And I started just getting all of these subscribers and I didn't even know what it meant. And my daughter was explaining to me about, this is cool. You can monetize. <laughs> and I was thinking, I got to pay someone to do this. And she goes, no, you get paid. You know? And, and so that, I think it was like right at 1000, because if you get to a thousand subscribers and 1400, uh, viewing hours, uh, you can monetize, you know, and that's when yeah. the ads start, start playing. Yeah. So I think it was that, that was when, uh, I felt that, you know, there, this could, this could continue to grow. Yeah. Know? Oh boy. Uh -huh. Hang on a second, because I got to pop this one out there. We got a super chat from Matt Rofer in the big news. His son, Simon is getting a splitter. Ho -ho! Way to go, Simon. All right, Simon, congratulations. We will definitely raise our cups up to that. Cheers. Wow, that is that is good news. I know he's got um, – his Matt's son, Simon, has a, has a little firewood stand he started last year. So it's always awesome. good to see the younger generation taking things on, and especially with firewood. <clears throat> <laughs> that is my can that is my mantra to people that want to sell firewood i keep saying if you want to sell firewood start selling firewood you know get it going you can do yep. it is there anything is there ever um when people talk to you about starting selling firewood is there any question that you get asked that people that you wish people would ask a different question like you know, people always ask certain things, but if, you know, what is it, some, what is something they should be asking for advice? Um, what people should be asking me is how do I um, develop a service model? Um, it seems, you know, a lot of people when they want it, when they, when we talk firewood and starting a business, it's usually, you know, I want to what saw, what splitter, where do I get my wood? You know, where do I, um, where do I stack it? <clears throat> uh, I think that they're focused on the, the, the production end. And probably yep. that's because that's what we know most, you know, that's what people yep. get involved in firewood. You don't think about the selling end. And I really do think that, um, if you want to start selling firewood, forget about all of the tools and stuff buy yourself a website domain, you know, for nine 99 from GoDaddy. get <laughs> a three page website that says that you sell firewood and watch what happens. Yeah. You know? Uh, and then, cause you can always, even if you don't have firewood, you can always find it. It's easy to go out there and find firewood and buy it. Yep. I just got mm -hmm. a quick, uh, give a shout out here to Harry Ellingsworth for the, uh, the super sticker. Cheers, Harry. Thank you Way very go, much. Harry. Thanks, Harry. Yeah, that's the one thing um, that I've kind of, when people ask me stuff, you know, like, oh, how, you know, what, what should I get? What should I buy? You know, first, you know, if mm -hmm. I get this or that. And it's like, you know, I, I agree completely with you in the, that people focus so much on the production side, but they don't then yeah. focus on, you know, what is the service you're going to provide? Like how, you know, yeah. 
When you go to Facebook Marketplace and you see 20 ads for firewood, what's going to make you be the one that that person, you know, wants to yeah. try? <clears throat> and I would even take that one step farther. You know, if you're serious about selling firewood, so, you know, what are your goals? Do you just want to sell it to put some gas in the gas tank or, or to buy beer? Or if you want to make a living, my recommendation would be to stay off of Facebook, you know, because <laughs> all the people on Facebook, on Craigslist, they're, they're bargain shoppers. Yep. You know, they're looking for a good deal. And the first thing that you will learn when you start selling firewood is that it is very easy to sell firewood. You know, yes. I would bet that there's probably not a stick of firewood out there that goes unsold every year. You know, there's a firewood shortage every year, every yeah. year around this time of year, there's no more firewood, you know? Right. And, uh, and even me who's full-time firewood, <laughs> I'm starting, you know, when I hear my phone ring, I'm, <laughs> I'm like, Oh my God, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to run out here, but, uh, you know, it's easy to sell firewood, but that is not what my goal is. My goal is to make a living out of doing it. So right. what I have done was I've applied what I have learned over the years, you know, working for an auto parts, um, you know, which these auto parts stores, you know, have really revolutionized retail um, with auto parts. Cause you know, in the old days with auto parts, it was just a guy on the parts counter and a cigarette and a coffee cup, you know, <laughs> and now all of these, uh, these, I mean, they're just gorgeous stores. They're inviting, you know, to, yep. to women or to people that are intimidated by auto parts. And that's what I've tried to do with firewood. Yeah. Um, Nelson, hang on here. Nelson Ridge farm. He loved both channels. Thanks both of you for the great videos. Mm -hmm. So, well, thank you, Nelson. He's Ridge got farm. a nice channel too. Everyone yes. check out his channel. He's very, and he's a, he's a gentleman, you know, he really leaves nice comments and he's always a, uh, a positive person. Thank you very much, Nelson Ridge Farm. Yeah, that's, that's the other rad. thing. The other thing I find um, interesting is um, a lot of people don't put enough thought into what their customer thinks after they leave. You know, yeah. Like <laughs> sometimes I don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, if if you think of it like you know, do you want to leave that customer with the an experience that they, you know, they want to call you back when they need more, or do you leave them with, you know, the quick, I made, I got my money. I'm out of here on to the next one, you know? Yeah. Well, you know, that would be, again, what are your goals? If you're just looking to sell some wood and get it out of your life, <laughs> you know, or, you know, like for me, you know, I want to make a career out of this and I see every, cause everyone, you know, especially when I first started, all of these customers were the my very first time ever, you know, with yeah. them as a customer. And I, I've, I call it get, uh, gaining a customer for life. You know, if you treat them with respect, if you provide a quality product and a world class service, you know, you're, the probability of you getting a call back from them next time go up. And that is my goal. I want to keep a customer for life. So every time I've had days when I've come home, I did a video on the one, the guy called me at like five 30 on a sat on a Friday and I was done for the day. <laughs> uh, but you know, their power, their power was out and I saw it, you know, there was an opportunity. So I loaded yep. up a truck and, and went out to him. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I think that's, you know, I think, what you just said right there, that whole thing, I think that also comes through in your videos. And I think that's, you know, I think that's what, mm -hmm. you know, brings you engage the viewers to be a viewer for, you know, come back and watch your next video. It's like that, that carries through, you know, just the same. So, oh, hang mm -hmm. on. We've got uh, the purple collar life. Keep up the good work, guys. Love both channels. Your firewood standards are high and I appreciate that. Keep up the great work. Thank you very much, Purple Collar Life. <clears throat> yeah. I just watched his video about his grapple. So oh. uh, he had one on his John Deere. Yeah. <laughs> He's got a nice channel too. Yeah. So um, so before we go quick, um, so you, you mentioned you have some new shirts. So the one thing I want to do, <laughs> um, I want to – uh, throw it out there right now for everybody watching. After this video is over, go back and leave a comment 
and I will randomly draw two people, and I'm going to um, go on Joe's site and buy you buy two shirts for two people. So, ah, uh, you don't have to do that. Oh yeah, because I think that's another cool thing is that um, I th all your merch sales goes to your camera persons. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> college uh -huh. fund, right? Yeah, these last few videos, I think you'll realize she wasn't uh, she, the, the one that you're going to see coming up on uh, Sunday. You'll know that she didn't film this one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it'll be good. But yeah, so everybody, yeah, no. uh, after the video um, posts, just go back, leave a comment. Um, we'll randomly pick, and I want to get uh, I want to get some people out there some Ohio Woodburner merch because uh, awesome. That new shirt is, I'm liking that, that blue. That's looking good with the orange. <laughs> yeah, this blue is called Sapphire. Oh. <laughs> I almost didn't choose it when I saw the name, but it looked okay. <laughs> what up? Uh, that was our, you, uh, the longest time it was, uh, you can have any color shirt you want at Ohio Woodburner as long as it is green. <laughs> <laughs> have, you, uh, have you ever had any uh, like strange requests um, people call you and like say, you know, maybe they wanted like uh, some pine for smoking a turkey. <laughs> I did. I had a guy that called me um, right before Christmas and he asked if I had any pine. Uh, he says it's they just like to burn it at Christmas because it puts that odor into their house. I was like, I don't, I don't have a stick of pine to be found. You know, <laughs> uh, I was thinking, I was like, I was seriously, I was going to go like pull some twigs off of our, you know, white pine tree just to take out to him. You know, it could have been a great opportunity to get a customer for life. But, um, and then, you know, I bought firewood the other day and the next thing I know, there's like eight sticks of pine in it. So I went and, ahead and saved them in case the guy ever calls back. And, well, and just, <laughs> just to, just to give everybody in on it. I, that was me. I was uh, doing another prank call to people, and I I called Joe up, and I was like, "Yeah, I'm uh, <laughs> I'm gonna be in town for the holidays, and my grandma really likes the smell of pine, so I thought I would smoke the turkey with it. Do you have any pine for sale?" <laughs> and and, and he, I I just remember your response was like, "Oh boy, I'm, I'm really sorry. I, I just don't have." <laughs> you know, I, I was expecting you to say something like. What would you want to smoke a turkey with pine yeah. for? <laughs> Always uh, be polite. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's uh... <laughs> <laughs> all right. So let's see. Um, I'm just going to quick go back through here to see if there was any uh, some questions. Um, I, I've I've just been not not able to keep up with them all. So. Um, Craig Wilson has a sapphire log splitter. <laughs> oh, how about that? <laughs> okay. So, yeah, I mean, you know, is there – I know we touched upon the whole question thing, but, you know, anything mm -hmm. else you uh, – oh, wait, I think I just missed a question. Maybe not. Never mind. <laughs> anything else on your, on your mind that you'd want to – toss out to people here tonight um no i i i just um i want to thank you for inviting me on and um yeah it, it's the whole the whole youtube thing i'm still just trying to understand all this you know i <laughs> So when you have a YouTube channel, YouTube gives you a dashboard, you know, which has all your metrics. And, you know, I there's like 50 different countries that watch <laughs> us. You know, I, I have, you know, routine contributors from Ireland and Estonia and Germany and, and New Zealand. And um, it's just, you know, this has just been, and that's what, you know, I, I just think of myself as I sell firewood, but that's what I'm saying. I got to realize that, you know, I'm a YouTube channel too. Um, and I yeah. just had, uh, I just had an invitation. I'm not going to announce it yet, but when, uh, oh. when we, um, when we uh, ink the deal, I guess I've been invited to, to make a, you know, a celebrity appearance at a, at a trade show here this summer, you know, All so right. they, we got to make sure that 
that the trade shows are going to go forward this year. Yeah. yeah, that's if they're if they are gonna hopefully hopefully they will because I was planning on making a few appearances at one or two myself. So yeah. maybe we'll cross paths in person <laughs> and not just over the internet. That would be good. Well, then I'll <laughs> keep my wallet in my front pocket. Then if you're going to be there, <laughs> <laughs> we did have uh, Jared Hildebrandt. Stay safe, have fun, and be cool. All right, thank you very much, Jared. Oh my goodness, and we have. Uh, outside with Shaib here, he's uh, wow. He's saying the Woodhound Convention Fund. Oh boy, that's right. Shaib is Shaib is awesome. You know, he's a giver. You ever notice that? And um, he yes. he is always giving. Yeah, he's real cool. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, that's you know, when you were talking about the countries, that's one thing that I didn't um, like. I didn't really get focused on the me- on the analytics too much but then when i did i started looking yeah. at you know like the age range and the countries and yeah it's it's just right. crazy to think you know this yeah you know. and that's what i um you know i if you got to know me you'll learn that i am terrible with numbers <laughs> <laughs> i I can spell numbers, but, you know, I can't factor them. And just numbers and me, we just don't get along. And at any time, you know, I hear like a report with numbers in it, it's like, ah, you know, I just ignore it. I yeah. think uh, so like YouTube and Firewood, it's just I keep rule number one is it's got to be fun, you know. Yep. That's the main the thing. Jacobson the Jacobson here. Project. He's jumping in here. He See, he, he just got into Firewood, so he's going to be paying attention to his stack direction. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much, Jacobson Project. Yeah, that is. Yeah, that I is. don't think I think for wood that's like just going to be up for a few months. I don't think it matters. But if it's going to be up for two years in north and south. Yeah. Just like just like running in the football game, run north and south. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. <laughs> um. I think there was one question I just saw fly by about quick, just to touch on the age range. Like I noticed that my core demographic was like the 35 to, you know, 60 plus age. Uh So yeah, it's kind of crazy because, um, and that's the one thing that once I looked at that, I kind of got thinking, you know, like you have to kind of cater what you're doing and to like, you know, you see everything out there on social media is geared towards the younger generation. But mm-hmm. I think sometimes that's kind of a turnoff to us older guys. <laughs> it's, it's something to always, it's in the back of your mind. There's always so much going on, but yeah. And that's what I think what you know, people our age, you know, with firewood is what, you know, you think about, when you are working firewood, especially with someone, if you're growing up with parents or brothers and sisters and all, you know, you're doing it together. It's just a slow, um, you know, not a high uh, thought process activity. Right. And I think that's the kind of moments, though, that create bonding. And right. um, that's why I think a lot of people have that uh, emotional connection, you know, with firewood. And it, to me, it's not just that too, but man, you know, just the sound, someone had commented on my one video with the log splitting with the Yappa, just that noise. Oh, just love the sound of log splitting like ash. Ooh, my fire is going out here. Um, <laughs> ash firewood when it splits just sounds awesome. You know, I love the sights and the sounds and the smells. Yes. You know, the, the new thing, I'm serious. I've never had a diesel before. The Bobcats out in my garage. When I walk out there, it has that, smell of diesel oh. <laughs> oh i love it yeah that was I, um, I could just go out there and smell my tractor <laughs> so <laughs> the um the one crazy thing about uh aromas of wood that i'll just quick <laughs> quick uh. say that it's kind of it's kind of a, a might be a little disturbing but um so amanda my my wife she works with uh, the birthing and delivery center at the hospital and so we were splitting some maple the other day and I picked some up and I smelt this piece and I was like, oh man, that smells kind of good. And I had her smell it and she was like, this smells like a placenta. <laughs> oh, <that's> a- 
<laughs> and I was like, oh my goodness. <laughs> Crazy how we can interpret different smells. Oh my goodness. We got yeah. all kinds of people here um, wondering about uh, Metal sp uh, Spurk, Mer Marlin L. Let me. Holy, holy moly. We got Metal Spurk. Um, tell us about the axes behind you. We got bark stacking bark up, and then we've got Jared Hildebrand again. So real quick, we are well. I guess we can keep going if you're all right, Joe. I, I don't want to keep you up too late. If you got, you know, uh, I'm good. <laughs> um, the axes back there, they are all well, except for the one. They are all uh, Van Dusen axes, and I think I saw Tim and Old Saws on here tonight. Um, but they are custom built Van Dusen axes. Um, as far as the stacking, bark up or bark down? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I've I've tried everything, and I, I understand the theory behind it, and I'm not denying it doesn't work. But I just I haven't seen the value. Just you know? stack it. I I just stack it. I just yep. stack it and go. Yeah. Yeah, I, I do sometimes pay attention to see if, if it fits better, you know. Sometimes there's a little mm. gap you got to fill, and it fits better with the bark up than the bark down, but, but mm. yeah. Yeah, well, we are uh, at the top of the hour. So, um, like I said, once again, every anyone on here that hasn't um, gone over to Ohio Woodburners channel, um, go and check them out. I'm sure you all have. Great videos all the time. Great content. It's just, you know. Thank you. It's it's great to see, you know, the the perspective you bring um, with the whole delivery yeah. services and all that, you know. And that was, you know, my pastime when I'm not selling firewood is watching YouTube videos of wood being split. <laughs> and I just love watching, you know, I'm serious. I just like watching firewood getting split. But when we started the channel, uh, you know, I, I know that there's a ton of, channels out there and the the i think you know the area of um the niche of firewood that i was wanting to go after was the business side of it you know yep. and uh i'm learning and i've done i've made every mistake that you possibly can and i show them you know uh, i talk about you know when we bought that dyna it's a great machine it just wasn't great for me uh so everything that we do um, you know, we put on there, you know, the, the good and the bad and, and all. So we're not, you know, I, I hope <laughs> I've never been accused yet of being a know-it-all cause I'm not, uh, <laughs> we are just, um, we're just, uh, you know, I call it, it's just a day in the life of a firewood delivery service. Some days we're making firewood and we film it, you know, some days we're doing deliveries and, you know, they're right around September, October. That's all I was doing. And that's what all of our videos were us doing deliveries. So, yeah. Uh, I haven't done any days at the paperwork. <laughs> you won't see paperwork on here. <laughs> um, Twenty-two years in the corporate life, I've uh, I'm a I'm a uh, paperwork rebel now. So you should see my desk. It looks terrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, so all right. Um, I think we'll wrap this up then. And uh, unless you got anything else, um, yeah, just uh, stay tuned. Thank you, Harry. There's probably some, uh, you know, like I said, there's always, there's always great content on your channel. I enjoy watching it. I know everybody else does. It's, it's, you know, just great seeing what you bring. Yeah, thank you. Uh, to the rest of us, sharing, like you said, everything We're gonna, that you do. And we are creeping up on ten thousand subscribers and um, one million views. So we'll, we'll. Uh, I want to have another live stream. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but I, it was, it's stressful. Okay. And, and that's one thing I like about the firewood is this, it's a stress-free job. You know, I mean, there's some things you worry about, but it's not like <laughs> stress dealing with a, you know, a jerk boss at job, you know, or, or office politics and stuff. So, um, <laughs> I want to do another live stream and we'll do some more, uh, we'll do some more giveaways. That last live stream was crazy. Good yeah. gosh. There was so many people on there. And then, uh, I was, I was caught up in the moment. I was giving everything away, and you know, we're 
uh, <laughs> had all these packages that we had to get mailed out and um, everything's been mailed out. I got an email from a guy saying he didn't get it yet, but I'm, I'm pretty sure it's going to be coming in the mail. You know, the mail has been pretty slow lately. Yeah. yeah. But anyhow, look for a live stream. I don't know when uh, we'll, we'll do one. And I don't, you know, I don't know what day it will be either. I try to pick a day that um, no one else is. I don't want to step on anyone's toes. So. <laughs> well, um, you'll let us know well in advance, and we'll all be looking forward to it. So I'm gonna sure. jump to uh to our. I think I'm gonna jump to my closing screen here. Let me just make sure I got this both on here. There we go. So we'll kick in the music, and. Uh, Again, thank you all for attending. Hope you guys enjoyed everything. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, moderators. Thank you, all the super chats. Um, another no great night today, here. Paul. So, uh, with that, Joe, thanks again. And uh, thank you, Dan. Everybody, stay safe, have fun, and be cool. All right. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs>